So, 8.33 is the time this morning. Uh, sobering thought for you. Every two hours, someone in the UK is told they have Parkinson's disease, and yet many of us know very little about the condition. BBC presenter Jeremy Paxman, writer Paul Mayhew Archer, reporter Rory Kathleen jones they're all hoping to change that with a new podcast. Uh, they all live with Parkinson's and hope that the podcast, called Movers and Shakers, will help to raise awareness. Uh, very pleased to say Paul Mayhew Archer is with us in the studio. Hey. Very good morning to you, Lovely Paul. To you. And uh, Rory, who we, of course, know well, joins us uh, down the line. Morning to you, Rory. Good morning. Um, very good to see you both. Did you consult on your shirts, by the way? You both got the blue. Is it? Is it? Is this? <laughs> is it a team shirt? I, I wasn't. It's sure a whether very, I was very sophisticated strategy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure whether I should wear this or whether it might explode the screen. No, you've done very, you've done very well. Um, movers and shakers. Can I just say it's a great? Well, it's a lovely play on you know what is such a serious subject. But I know. Just give people a sense of what it is you're trying to do with the podcast. Well, what we're trying to do is just share sort of our views about Parkinson's, and we represent different bits of Parkinson's, I suppose. I, I'm the cheerful one who tries to sort of put a, a, a gloss on it um, all the time. And, uh, for example, you said every two hours someone is told they have Parkinson's. And I think that's pretty tough, really, because some of us are being told at three o'clock in the morning. So that's... <laughs> and I try and look at the positive side of Parkinson's. And uh, so I do a one-man show about it, as well as the podcast. And then Mark Mardell, he represents the newly diagnosed, because he's only just been told. Rory is the expert. Uh, Gillian is the person who's sort of going through all sorts of odd experiences, like um, DBS. This is Gillian Lacey-Solomon. Gillian Lacey-Solomon. Yeah. And she's had stuff put in her brain to do, do with it. Uh, Nick, um, Nick Mostyn, is, is someone who's still working despite having Parkinson's. And then there's Jeremy Paxman, who's the grumpy one, who's, who's quite angry about having Parkinson's. And this is the picture we see. Is, is this you all getting together? Is that what that, you're seeing? That's it. And we're in a pub... And we were around a very uh, a table and we were in a sort of cramped place. So that if one of us wants to go to the loo, I mean, it's a 10 minute <laughs> stop for what we sort of try and manoeuvre. Um, Rory, I mean, there are obviously, we know some of these people, we know you, there are some very strong personalities in, in that mix. Tell us a bit about what you're hoping the podcast will t show people, how it will be different from what we've maybe heard before. Well, we're we're quite a lucky group, to be honest. We're we're rather aware that we are the we are the privileged people with Parkinson's. Uh, we're all reasonably well off. We've got sharp elbows. We can get treatment. We hope we can get to see the doctor when we want to. We think we can. Uh, we want to speak to the larger audience of people, both with Parkinson's and their support uh, mechanisms, their family, their carers, uh, who who don't have. Uh, those kind of links, those kind of contacts, because a lot of people are effectively suffering in silence. One example, lots of people are afraid to tell their employers, afraid to tell their friends that they've got it. There's still a bit of a stigma about it. Uh, and we want to sort of wipe that away. Rory, morning to you. I mean, <clears throat> the thing with Parkinson's as well, and, and it's good that our understanding has evolved. It's not just one symptom. You know, once upon a time, you would think Parkinson's and you would just think tremors. And that isn't just the case. Absolutely. I mean, some some of our group don't have a tremor. I have, you know, uh, a tremor in my right hand, which responds to stress. When I'm watching Brentford Football Club uh, <laughs> standing on the terraces, I'm shaking like a leaf. And right now I'm incredibly calm. Um, uh, there are a whole bunch of non-physical symptoms. For instance, depression. I, I had depression for the first year uh, came out of that. What I still have massively is sleeplessness. Um, and I think that affects nearly all of us uh, in the group. But the important thing to, to know about this is that it, it, this is not a sad listen. It's I think it's quite a funny listen, mainly thanks to Paul and to the incredible dynamic between Paul and Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy being magnificently grumpy and Paul... Um, <laughs> Is it is that just your is that part of your nature that has almost come out more as a result of well, you it, know it is and I've I've found I, ju I just um, find that the, the jokes come and every aspect of Parkinson's my, my neurologist is a woman called uh, Michelle Hu 
And I think having Doctor Who on your side is just absolutely <laughs> brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? Because <laughs> she can go into the future and come back with a cure. And you do, like, charity performances. You actually perform, don't you? I do. I'm performing tonight in Preston, and that's sold out, but I'm also going to, to Sirencester, Exeter, Bristol, uh, Cheltenham Playhouse. How, how well do Parkinson's jokes go down? Because, you know, there is that sensitivity, isn't there? No, well, strangely enough, they seem to go down very well indeed. And uh, I, I, I've never had people, or very rarely had people coming up and saying you shouldn't do jokes about that. Because actually, when you've got Parkinson's, you know, you relish the jokes. You want to have fun as much as possible. And a man came up to me when I did the show in, um, in The Will... And at the end of the show, he came up and he said, I was diagnosed five days ago and you have just stopped me worrying. Oh. And it was a really, you know, oh, gosh. Wow, well, that is something very special. Rory, I mean, the, the reality check around so many of these things, as you will know, is about funding in relation to so many health issues, but around Parkinson's as well, about what help is available and how people can access it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it doesn't have the high profile of some conditions, despite the fact that it affects an awful lot of people. And it's possibly because it's reasonably slow moving. But one of my priorities and one of the things this, this podcast hopes to do is help encourage people to do, donate towards the massive research effort, not very well funded effort, but very energetic effort to find a cure. Uh, there's a great charity called Cure Parkinson's. Uh, which we're hoping to raise money for, which is has got that mission. Because the slightly depressing thing is the medication that we all take was effectively developed 60 years ago, uh, and it masks the symptoms. It doesn't reverse the condition or anything like that. Uh, and we need to find something to, to give us hope that the, the condition can, can be dealt with. And there are some exciting trials going on right now, and they need funding. Paul, what are your symptoms? I, I'm, I'm slow. Um, I, it sometimes takes me 10 minutes to get my jumper on right. and sort of pull it on and just tug it down. And then my wife came into the room and said, oh, not that jumper, and whipped it off before I had a chance <laughs> to do it. And I'm also, I've started freezing, which means that if I um, come to a doorway, mm. I can suddenly, my legs stop moving and I'm sort of tottering forward. And it's it's the weirdest thing, and and lots of things can can trigger that, like a doorway or getting onto a train. Um, but people are incredibly helpful. I remember trying to get through Paddington Station, and a man said, "You know, I'll take your case for you." I mean, I never saw it again, but it was a, just a lovely <laughs> gesture, you know. Um, Paul, the, the, the you tell me there there are certain things that, uh, uh, people with Parkinson's could do that, that alleviate symptoms for a moment in time. For example, Rory was alluding to that about sometimes or situations you can be in, or certain things you can do, yeah. which can give a sort of a moment of calm in amongst other things. Yes, it, uh, I mean, when the pills are working, and I'm, we're talk, we talk about being on and off, when the pills are working, I'm on and I can sort of walk perfectly normally and be quite normal, and then they wear off and I'm suddenly just stop mm. and, and just become very slow, and I'm aware that my voice is going... What it does is it tries to take your voice away from you and your movement away from you and also your smile. I was told when I was diagnosed that the neurologist said, uh, for example, you seem to be having trouble smiling. And I said, well, that could be because you told me I've got Parkinson's. But in <laughs> fact, it does. To, and what it tries to do is to take away all your forms of communication. Mm. And it's a sort of cruel thing in that sense. And that, therefore, that's what I'm trying to battle against and, and tell people to get out there. We need to get out there and show what it's like so that we get support. But, <laughs> Um, Rory, just before we let you go, um, anyone who follows you on social media will know about... Are you looking around for her, for Sophie, um, your dog? She's... How's she doing? She's... Because you'll have to explain quite briefly Sophie's background for anyone who hasn't been following you. She uh, is a rescue dog that arrived from Romania just before Christmas and is te was terribly frightened and basically lived behind our sofa for the first... Um, uh, the first three or four weeks, and she's gradually getting better. She's peering out from the sofa right now. She's been circling during this whole... Oh, here she comes. Oh, uh, here we go. She's know. coming round. Can you see her? There oh, she is. Oh, yes, there she is. Hey, Sophie. And she's just... How long have you had her now? Uh, since uh, just before Christmas. She's, oh, uh, she's, she's definitely coming out. And she's getting better, aren't you? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and she's off she goes back again. Um, but we love her dearly, and she we, we feel a bit responsible uh, as her agents because she is an internet sensation. If if I haven't put a pe- picture up by eight o'clock, people are going, "What's going on? Where's, the, <laughs> where's Sophie?" So uh, it, it's it's a uh, it's quite a phenomenon. And she was supposed to be an aide with my Parkinson's because my old dog. Uh, I used to walk with before seven every morning and exercise is very important. So I'm desperate for her to get bold enough to come for a walk with me. Still quite away from that, though. Well, we'll keep we'll keep following you and see and updating. Thank you. We've got Sophie live on breakfast. That's a first. Um, Rory, it's great <laughs> to see you. Rory, Kathleen Jones, thank you. Paul, Maggie March, it's, it's been a joy talking to you thank as you well. On stage tonight. On stage tonight in, in Preston. Preston. In Preston. Good luck. Thank you. And uh, Movers and Shakers is a podcast uh, now live, uh, available, of course, wherever you get your podcasts from. It does sound very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. It really does.